Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God, God is good. God is great. And greatly to be praised. And we're grateful to God for another Easter Sunday, Amen. Resurrection Day. Amen. Jesus rose from the grave. And anyone who doesn't believe it, don't let that be their problem. Amen. The one thing I'm positive of is that he rose from the grave because he rose in me. And uh, <clears throat> I couldn't stop sinning without him. And so he visited me one day and delivered me from a lifestyle of sin and shame. And so now I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes. No matter who you are, if you believe Jesus rose, that's the beginning. The very beginning, but it takes more than that. But we're grateful today, amen. We celebrate <clears throat> Easter, amen. And folks got pretty today. They went and spent money and bought some new clothes. Nothing wrong with buying some new clothes. Nothing wrong with looking good for Jesus. Nothing wrong with going on Sunday in your new, your new outfit. But your soul got to get right. Amen. So we don't criticize because somebody bought some clothes. <laughs> it's okay. We want to look good. We should look good every every Sunday. Though. We want to come to God's house looking our best. Every time we come, we want to come representing the best that God has to offer. Uh, but we're not into criticizing folks because they got to start somewhere, don't you? Yeah. And this might be a start for somebody somewhere. We don't know. So we can't kill everybody. Uh, because they celebrated differently and so forth and so on. So we're grateful today for what this day represents, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we're going to go today to the book of Luke, chapter number 14. And this is the gospel according to Luke. It was written about 60 A.D. Uh, by Luke, a close friend and companion of Paul. And he's perhaps the only Gentile author of any portion of the New Testament. Uh, Luke was also a physician, Colossians 4 and 14. It reads, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Luke was not an eyewitness to the life of Jesus Christ. And little is known of his conversion or his early life. Uh, Luke was an evangelist by calling and a physician by profession. Luke not only wrote the Gospel of Luke, but also the book of Acts and traveled uh, with Paul as a missionary. Uh, and Luke was with Paul when he was martyred. Uh, as to the rest of Luke's life, very little about him is known. Now, Luke's writing style seems to be influenced uh, by the writings of others. And Luke interviewed uh, eyewitnesses. Uh, he studied information he received in a range of under inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And of course, the Bible is all the scriptures given by inspiration of God and it's profitable for doctrine, for, for reproof, for, for correction, for, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now, Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 read as for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things which wherein thou hast been instructed. And so it's important that we appreciate information amen, as it is given from God for us to get understanding. Uh, you cannot serve God without understanding. Uh, the writing of this gospel is directed mainly towards Theophilus, but still directed towards all Gentiles. Uh, and to, for us today, it's directed to, toward us, and we ought to get the uh, benefit from the written word of God. Now, Luke's, Luke talks about many medical issues and gives it attention to, to the retelling of the birth of Christ. Uh, this gospel is, is the only account of the proclamation to Ze Zacharias and Mary, uh, the, the, the only account of the birth and childhood of John the Baptist. Uh, 
in the songs of Mary and Elizabeth, uh, the birth uh, of Jesus, the visit from the shepherds, uh, circumcision, details of Christ's childhood, and the thoughts uh, of Mary. Luke also shows great interest in the individual lives of Zacchaeus, the thief on the cross, the prodigal son, the publican, and uh, several others. Uh, he relates the story of the Good Samaritan and the thankful leper. And so this brother who did not walk with Christ, one of the two uh, uh, gospel writers who were not of the original 12, who wrote uh, through, through uh, hearsay and conversations and experience and, of course, inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And so uh, as we're looking at today's uh, text in chapter 14 of Luke, beginning in verse number 16, then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. He asked for many. He invited uh, many. And sent a servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. Uh, and so here, this man is, is, re, is inviting folks uh, who've done nothing, and he simply prepared, prepared a meal for them. Uh, he's done the work, and, he, and they have one thing, one requirement, which is simply to come. Yes. They all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And so, uh, sometimes folks say this man bought a piece of ground, he had to see it, he bought a piece of ground without seeing it. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that's what that says. And, uh, you can buy something you've seen, but you still need to go see it after you bought it, right? Uh, because if you buy something, then you go and you looked at it, you bought it, and when you, go, you want to go see it to make sure that what you bought, what you saw before, is still the same way. And you want to take care of your business. And so he, he wanted to take care of his business. But we just want to take out the, you know, the, the little clause that people put in there habitually that what kind of fool buys a piece of land and doesn't see it. Well, it doesn't say he didn't see it. He said he bought a piece of land he wanted to go. I mean, I must uh, needs go and see it. doesn't mean he's never seen it before. I pray he had me excused. And another said, I had bought five yoke of oxen. And I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Uh, so you have these, these three who make excuses uh, for not coming <laughs> to the feast. Now again, they didn't earn it. Uh, it was a feast prepared for them. It was free of charge. Uh, there were no tickets sold, y'all. No ticket, no, 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 no entry uh, fee. It was just simply, no interest me, it was just simply come uh, and, and take advantage of what I have prepared. Uh, but look, I've got this land and I've got these five people oxen and I just married this wife. Now, listen to how, think, think about this, how uh, uh, the diversity of their issues. One has his land, all right? Now, you know the land is not going anywhere regardless of what shape it's in. You don't move land. Another has his oxen. Well, there's five head of oxen, just five, okay? Uh, and they are oxen, uh, and it could wait, okay? Then there's other now. This is, this is the biggie. I just married a wife. I got to go handle this business. I just married a wife. And y'all know how you got to use, see, that this is, this is church folks. You got to use common sense. God wants you to spend time with your wife. Well... If you read the Bible, uh, when the encounter that Jesus had with the young rich man and, uh, mm -hmm. and Jesus told him, so you yeah, have to get the poor, and the Bible says the young man went away sad. He found it a hard saying. Right. Now, he said the disciples contemplated that thing, and, and Peter asked, well, who can be saved? And Jesus said, those of you who have forsaken houses and wives and mother and father and children, mm -hmm. okay, in this life, in the life to come, you're going to receive blessings. So, Jesus wasn't concerned with your being married. Uh, folks blame God's work for 
breaking up their marriages. No, God's work doesn't break your marriage up. Your work breaks your marriage All up. All right, that's right. There's no way in the world I'm going to work for God and my family be destroyed. There's no way. That's right. When I work for myself, then that's it destroys right. my family. Amen, that's See, right. See, too often we're trying to tell my we're pastors, but we're not doing God's will. We're pastoring of our own flesh. When you obey the voice of God, there is, first of all, you have to learn the, the nature of God. You have to learn his attributes. And God wouldn't dare allow you to do his work to rip your family up. He just wouldn't do it. That means that you've gotten out of the will of God. Because when you walk in God's order, God doesn't destroy your life. You know what I mean? So people mischaracterize God. Well, you got to take care of your family. After all, you know, God wants to have common sense. I, Lord, I don't want those folks common sense. What I want to do is work for the Lord. And if anybody in my family doesn't like that, then they can leave. They can leave. That's fine with me. But I'm not going to stop working for God because somebody in my family is disgruntled with my... I didn't say working for the church. I said working for God. I didn't say going go fools is in church. I'm talking about working for the Lord. We get busy doing God's work. God honors what we do. That's right. Amen. No way in the world you can work for God and God going to destroy your, your life. We work for him. That, 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 that's awful. How dare we? How dare we misidentify God that way? That's a side note. So I got. Right. I'm gonna marry this woman, man. I gotta go. And, you know, I'm married. I gotta go and use my common sense. We going on honeymoon. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So that servant came and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, "Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring and hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind." And so. It comes to a point where God has said, extend the invitation to those who know, those who are supposedly in the know, those who have some consistency in their lives. They've got land, they have oxen, even have a wife, a new wife. And, and, and so, but, but they, they rejected the offer to come right. to sup with him. Uh, and, and so he, he tells, now you go out and you get all those folks with issues. Lord, I thank you. Mm -hmm. There's something about people with their issues. Uh, they bring a whole other level of challenge, and, but a whole other level of glory in the work. Come and on. so you go out. So that, that servant came and, and, and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go out quickly into, that, into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. The poor, the maimed, the halt and the blind. Yeah. These are people who are in need, who yeah. are in trouble. Yeah. These are people who want to be delivered, who want mm -hmm. assistance, who, who want their situation to improve. Go get them. See, too often in today's church, we have too many things and we're too full and we're too busy and we're too preoccupied with our own agendas. Well I've got this to do and that to do. And and, and there is this, this there is this curse of common sense in the church and taking care of your business first and all those kinds of things first natural and spiritual and, 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 and not rightly dividing the word of God and mischaracterizing who and what God is. And and there is no way that you can blame all your mess on God, uh, and you cannot say God blessed you, then put the things that God, that you say God blessed you with ahead of God. When God's work has to be done, you put nothing or no one ahead of the work of God. Yes. And so those don't want to come, they have, see, sometimes, sometimes folks just have too much. They just got too many things. They got fine cars, and, and I got to clean my car. It's the only day I have off is Sunday, and I got to take care of my business. So they, they might come to church and look at the clock the entire time, but they got to go and handle their business. I ain't had time all week to clean my house. I got to go and take care of my house. And we've got too many things going on uh, uh, in our lives, but, yeah. but there's somebody who doesn't have anything, somebody who is in trouble, somebody who is desperate, somebody who is despondent, somebody has nobody else for them. And so when they receive the invitation to come and to dine with the Lord, then they see it differently. See, because too many distractions will mess you up. Yes, will. And too much stuff causes too many distractions. And sometimes we get bogged down in church work and we miss Christ. Yeah, we, we want to build past, we want to build the church, but we forget about doing the work of Christ. And we want to make sure that 
We get the bodies in the house and, and hook the building up and all that so people can come in and gawk and say, oh boy, you sure are doing a great work. As opposed to being committed to the saving of souls. Doesn't matter the material things. What matters is the spiritual things. But I know what the Bible says. Jesus writes himself in Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now that's just not in your personal life. That is in the work that we do for Christ. We seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And so our job is to communicate the holiness of God to the world. Our job is to make sure that the dying know that Jesus brings life. Our job is to communicate that though to those who are blind, that Jesus restores sight. Yes. Those who are deaf, that Jesus unclouds yes. deaf ears. Yes. Whatever your situation or condition is, Jesus is the answer yes, is. for any uh, ill in your life. So Amen. that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And so I believe that there, a, there comes a point where God becomes impatient with those who he's been calling and calling. He's been blessing them. They have things and you have no reason to not serve God other than you put your stuff ahead of God. I've got this new wife, man. I ain't got time for that. I got to go handle my business. After all, I got good common sense and I'm going to keep my family, keep my wife happy by taking care of her. When you put your wife ahead of God, then you made your wife your God. God, Lord have mercy. Amen. When you put your children ahead of God, you made your children your God. God. Yeah. Amen. And so we become too caught up in ourselves, in our own personal lives. And we love ourselves far too much. It's all about me. And that service said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room. Listen, when God makes the call, not everybody's going to respond. But those uh, who are on the what we call the low end, you know, the, 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 the bottom crawlers, mm -hmm, they come, and, but there's still room. There's always more room yes, at God's altar. And so there's more room. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Now at some point we've got to take hold to this thing for I say unto you that none of these of those which were bidden shall taste of my supper. You've got to know, listen, I, I, I've invited them to come and they did not want to come. And so you rejected God, well guess what? He will reject you. Amen. But we have to hear the voice of God saying go into the hedges and the highways and compel them to come. Well, he's an alcoholic. Well, compel him to come. No, no, he never said clean them up. He didn't say tell them to stop their mess. He didn't say he's told, he told them to come. He didn't say he'll take these clothes and put them on them and give them a bath. He said compel them to come. Yes. Go. It doesn't matter their condition. Compel them to come. Now, if we go back up to verse number 21, so that the servant came and showed his Lord these things in the master house, being angry, he said to a servant, go out quickly to the streets and lanes in this other city and bring it hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And so go, go right to where all the people are, the masses, and, 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 and invite them in. But there are some folks on the fringes, and, and, and there are some folks who are living other lifestyles. And, and, you know, there are lifestyles that we don't approve of because they're sinful, but we can't reject them and not share the good news that's with right, them. That's right. And so we can't look that's at right. anybody's sin and decide that we are God and, and deem them unhelpable. We have to reach out to everybody because we were called to do this, to go into the hedges and into the highways and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of the of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children right. and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own self also, 
He cannot be my disciple. And so let me use this thought today on this Easter Sunday, 2014. Yeah. You must hate to love. You must hate to All love. Right now. Yeah, too many of us have not learned how to hate. And we're so caught up in loving until we forget the art, if you will, of hating. Now, it is our preoccupation with loving ourselves and choosing to please ourselves and others rather than pleasing God that has many of us in constant turmoil. So many folks, their minds are always troubled because they've not chosen to please God. Listen, it is the advent of Christ's resurrection and his ascending to heaven uh, that has made it possible for man to live in peace while walking in this earth. Why would I walk in confusion when Christ has made it possible for me to walk in his peace? We have a right to be free from sin. We have a right to not be bound by the works of the flesh that attack us only to make us miserable. We have a right to be set free because who the sun sets free is free indeed. And so we have been set free by Christ. Therefore, we have no excuse to continue in sin. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? We're not going to continue in sin. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And so we've got to learn how to hate. We must hate to love. And and a a thought would be Christ, our perfect example. Mm -hmm. There there are some things in our lives that we must learn to hate. Uh, It it begins with a good, clear understanding of the word of God. And the reason people cannot achieve the level of hate uh, that that leads to love is because they've not learned the word of God. Be taught to fear God because of who he is is what helps us to live according to the word of God. Listen, Solomon writes in Proverbs 1 and 7, he says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And so we have become such an impatient people until we're not even willing to sit down and listen to a preached message sent from God through the man of God. Because we do not want wisdom, we do not want instruction, and so we behave as fools. And and, and the most dangerous thing is to have determined that you know everything. Well, I don't need to hear that because I know that already. Well, if you know so much, then why is your life so jacked up? It's amazing how people say they know the word of God, but they're always struggling with oh, sinful lifestyles. So if you know the word of God and you've not been made free, then let me suggest this. You don't know the word All right. of God. All right. The yeah. fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction when we learn how to sit at the feet of God. When God shares his good news with us through his, through the mouth of his, of his vessel, when he shares that good news, the wise one sits and takes everything in. It is the wise one who takes notes and, and, and physical notes and mental notes. It is the wise one who becomes preoccupied with knowing what thus saith the Lord. I will not let you speak and I not eat because I'm trying to grow in grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. We've got to begin somewhere, but if you've not learned to fear the Lord, then you have not begun the road to knowledge. But fools to 
despise wisdom and instruction. I don't need nobody to tell me what to do. I hear from God. But the Bible says you cannot hear without a preacher. And he can't preach except he be sent. And so we find ourselves uh, 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 able to live holy because we've been taught to fear the Lord and not solely for punishment's sake if we do wrong. But there's great blessing in fearing God. Yes. There's something but be committed to God and his righteousness. And let me say this now. If you are not committed to righteousness, then you are not committed to God. Yes. Because God is our righteousness. God. And my commitment to God is reflected through my pursuit of righteous living. Now, in fearing God, we become more interested in pleasing him for the sake, the simple sake of doing right. And as my daddy used to always say, it's just right to do right. right. At some point, you got to fall in love with righteousness and doing right. right. And you've got to learn to hate unrighteousness and doing wrong. And so when you don't learn how to hate sin, you'll never fall in love with righteousness. It is the sin in me that I've got to come to hate. If I've not come to detest the sin in me, there is no way I can be committed to God. I've got to leave sin alone. If I don't leave sin alone, there is no way that I can be a child of God because I cannot serve two masters. And, and so there is no lukewarm walk in Christ. Right, Either right. you're hot or you're cold. That's it. That's but it. Revelation, if you're lukewarm, he'll spew you out of his mouth. Yes. We've got too many lukewarm relationships with Christ. People who try to make living holy optional. Well, it's not necessary to do all of that. And and so they've not learned to hate the, the sin that's in them. They've not learned to hate the sin that exists in the world. Now, in fearing God, we become a more, more interested in pleasing him for the sake of doing right. And fortunately, God has given us a way out of sin and eternal damnation. Well, I don't want to do wrong, but guess what? God already made a way out of you, out of your doing wrong. You don't have to practice sin because Christ has made the path clear for all of us to flee the constraints of sin. But when you've not come to hate being in sin, there's no way you can leave sin. You have to become hateful of the sin that you commit. I'm tired of cussing. I ain't cussing no more. I hate cussing. I hate smoking. I hate drinking. I hate doing drugs. I hate uh, doing all what a fornication. I hate adultery. I hate these things. Yes. You can't stop sinning if you don't come to hate sinning. Hate as long as you don't hate it, you won't do it. Right. But when you learn to hate sin, then you'll stop practicing sin and the Holy Ghost will come and abide on the inside and keep you free from living sinful lifestyle. Now, I'd like to get, we begin with, with, with first by, 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 by identifying some behaviors, some actions, uh, some habits uh, uh, that are detrimental to the spiritual health uh, of man. And, and in the book of Galatians, chapter number 5, verses 19 through 21, the Bible reads, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, whew, and such like. Well, you didn't hit me, preach, uh -huh. And such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, there are 17 nouns used to describe 
describe the works of the flesh. And, 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 and nine that are used to identify the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And, but, but all of the works of the flesh fall under three categories. Um, and, and in the first epistle of John, chapter number two, verses 15, 16, and 17, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, love the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that knew the will of God abideth for it. And so the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Well, our problem is that we are too guilty of lust. You got to hate. You got to hate to love. And so you got to hate lust. Uh, lust is very strong craving or desire. No, no, no. When you look at lust of the flesh, cravings that are satisfied through physical contact. Lust of the, of the eyes. Cravings that are satisfied through visual stimuli yes, and pleasure. Yes, yes. Lord, I want to touch it. I want to look yes, at it. I want to uh, taste it. All of those things. Lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. And, and these, these are sins against the flesh. And we have adultery. The act of breaking the marriage vow mm -hmm, of sexual fidelity. Uh, and, and, and it's a matter of who you commit this act with uh, when you say that you are married Lord have mercy uh, a fornication engaging in sexual relations uh, by one who is unmarried uh, and so when you are unmarried or not be engaging in sexual That's relations right. not in your thoughts nor remember now the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and Jesus says if a man looks on a woman and lust after her, he's already sinned in his heart. heart. Uncleanness, you are dirty, you're filthy, you're soiled, you're impure, you're unchaste. And too many, too many dirty folks in the church saying they're of God. You cannot be unclean and be of God. And, and so these are sins against your flesh. And, and, and the way to be delivered from these things is to first learn to hate them. Yeah. I hate adultery. Yeah. I hate fornication. Yeah. I hate yeah. uncleanness. Yeah. I hate lasciviousness, a, a lewd sexual behavior. I hate being lustful. I hate these things. I'm no longer interested in practicing these sins. You must hate to love. Yeah, we're going to get to love, but you got to hate first. I, 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 I hate the life that I'm living because it's not pleasing to God. Sins against the flesh, sins against the spirit, uh, idolatry, worship of idols, sin against the spirit, uh, witchcraft, dealing with evil powers, sorcery, sins against the spirit. Pride of excessively high opinion of one's own ability or one's own importance. Lord have mercy. Sins against the spirit. And I'm now listen. You have you have, you have folks who who are so exalted of themselves until they cannot humble themselves before God because they are too filled with pride. But. God does not allow us to get away with that. Pride of life. Lord, we're so we're so awesome until we don't need any work on us. We look down on everybody else. Hatred. Extreme or intense dislike. Mm -hmm. Pride of life. You get you, you become so angry, so hateful, uh, uh, violent against people until you could care less about how they feel, what they think. You know, people say stuff like this. I don't care if anybody says I just say what I was on my mind. Well, that's a hateful person. When you open your mouth and you just want to hurt people, you are a hateful spirit. Mm -hmm. That's what you are. Pride of life. L listen, variance. Uh, a variance, disagreement. Variance is different. Uh, and this, this is another uh, sign, the pride of life. All you want to do is have it your way. And you can't agree with anything anyone else says or does. Emulations. 
Striving to be better than others. All you try to do is, I'm going to have the nicest car, nice house, nicest dress, nicest suit, nicest this, nicest that. Wrath. Now, now wrath is not just anger, but it is intense, violent anger. Yes, yes. There are folks in church who would become who become violent with you. They'll fight. Oh, they, they get real. They go beyond mad. Or they experience wrath, and they will engage and fisticuffs. Uh, uh, these are pride of life, a uh, 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 strife, uh, uh, discord, conflict. Uh, in the church, people are always contentious, always engaging in struggle and saying that they are saved. Uh, uh, sedition, stirring up discontent in the church, stirring up rebellion in the church. Man, and, and they use language that keeps people on the edge. They want to draw, they want to cause division between the pastor and the deacon, the, between the members of the deacon board and, and the ministerial staff and, and everybody. They just want it to be chaos in the midst of the people. Heresies believe contrary to accepted doctrine. There are so many heretics in the church today. Folks have changed the doctrine. We've got to learn to hate these things, envyings, not just jealousy, but resentful jealousy. These things are intense. We've got to learn to hate them to, to the point where they are not found in us. Murders, people kill, people spoil things, destroy things, and call themselves people of God. They kill physically, they kill you with their tongue. They'll talk about you like a dog. And all they seek to do is destroy you. They seek to destroy everybody around them. They are murderers. Drunkenness. Too many intoxicated people in the church saying they're saved. And some drink alcohol. Some drink spirits. But some are drunk in other ways. Emotionally and mentally and spiritually drunken. Uh, revelings, partying, and, and all this gay and noisy uh, 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 excitement going on. Uh, Lord have mercy. That's why we don't go any and everywhere. No, we don't go to the boom boom because we don't engage in revelings. All this mess in the church today. Party in the church. We don't party in the church. We are worshipers. We are not partiers. We are praisers. We are not partiers. And so we've got to learn how to hate the works of the flesh. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We must learn how to hate these things. But there are some more things inside of us that we've got to learn how to hate in order for us to achieve love. Lord have mercy. Some of us love just being depressed. We're not happy if we are not depressed. I'm not happy if I have nothing to complain about. Some people live their lives and they get excited about the fact that nobody likes them. At least they don't think anyone does. And, oh, nobody cares about me. Just depression. Well, you've got to learn to hate the depression that's in you. So many folks deal with confusion in their own lives, in their minds. You've got to hate confusion in your life. Drama. You've got to hate drama in your life. If you hang around folks, all they do is bring confusion and drama. You've got to leave them alone. You've got to hate the very existence of these things in your life. Bad relationships. Well, I'm in love. No, you're an idiot. There's no way in the world you can be in love with somebody. All they do is keep you in an uproar, in a tizzy. Every time you're with them, you are miserable. You're talking about you love them. Oh, well, listen. If she doesn't want me, I don't want her. I'm not mad at her. If he doesn't want me, I don't want him. I'm not mad at him. How can you be so silly to want somebody who does not want you? They express to you, I don't want you. What further conversation is there to have with that person? You don't want me, I don't want you. But some of us love to be rejected. We love to go begging after people. You've got to hate that spirit in you. Physical abuse. You've got to hate that spirit. Some folks love to be abused. Emotional abuse and mental abuse and psychological abuse. We love to be abused. We love confusion. You've got to come to hate those things in your life. No more. No, 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 no. Listen, you fill in your own blanks because ultimately there are some things in 
your life uh, that you got to come to hate. Um, you got to find out those things for yourself. Um, be honest. Identify those things. Uh, I've got to hate being stupid. Stop being stupid. Uh, I've got to hate letting folks make a fool out of me. Stop letting folks make a fool out of you. Yeah. I've got to stop being so emotionally dependent. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. You've got to hate it. I cannot live like this because it keeps me from God. It keeps me from pleasing Him. And so, we've got to get to the place uh, where everything that keeps us from God, uh, we have to reject it, we have to shed it, we have to hate it. I will not live my life like that uh, because I'm trying to make it to Jesus uh, and you, my friend, are in the way. <laughs> because when I want to go to church, you want to go get high. You are in the way. <laughs> Why am I engaging you in conversation <laughs> when all you want to do is sin, but I'm trying to get to Jesus, you got to come to hate people. You have to hate sin. You have, And when it's found in them, you have to hate them. I'm not fooling with you. I'm leaving you alone. Don't call me anymore. Don't text me. Don't inbox me. Don't tweet me. Don't do anything. Leave me alone because what you're bringing is sin and I hate it. And if the sin is identifying you, then I hate you. Leave me alone. And, and I, so we've got to learn how to hate. I hate sin. I don't just dislike sin. Mm -mm. I'm not just a little uncomfortable. I hate sin. Now you can't stop sinning if you don't hate sin. Because you'll stop for a minute, but you've not learned to hate sin. And guess who will come visit you again? Sin will come see you all over again. But when you learn to hate sin, you dismiss sin. Now, who of us wants to be around someone who we know really hates us? You want to be around that person. Well, when sin knows that you hate sin, then sin is going to become under control. The reason we can't get sin under control is because we've not learned to hate sin. Oh, you must hate sin. To love. And so now we, we, we arrive at the place where I realize, you know what, I hate sin. Mm -hmm. I don't like I don't like the mess that I'm in. I, I don't like my, my, my bad habits and some stuff I do in my life just ain't cute. And, and I, I had to come to the place where I don't want to do it. I'm not not don't want to do it. I'm not gonna do it anymore because I hate it. I hate I hate living like that. I hate I see myself on the road to the lake of fire and I'm and I'm trying to make it where I'm trying to not go. Have you are you crazy? If the road on the on the way to the lake of fire, I see I'm on that road, I gotta hate that road so I don't I'm right there. Or yeah. well, if I'm ambivalent to the road, guess what I'm going to wind up? The lake of fire. I hate every lifestyle. I hate every act. I hate every thought. Everything that leads to the road of destruction that all to the lake of fire. I hate it. I hate all of it. Whether it's in me or in somebody or something around me. I hate all of it. I am preoccupied now with loving Jesus. Mm -hmm. I didn't say loving myself. I said loving Jesus. Uh, see, the, 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 one of the misteachings in the church, in the world, but of course in the church, you got to love yourself first. Well, that's not true. Because you got to love Jesus because he is love. Mm -hmm. And so the only way we're going to achieve love is through Christ. You can't love on your own. You are not capable of doing that. But when you when you seek the face of Christ, listen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son who said believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Right. And God is love. Right. Here he comes in the flesh on this Easter Sunday here that we celebrate. He rose from the grave after being crucified. And now, now here's the majesty of, of, of our Lord and Savior is that he went to the cross to die for the very ones who were crucifying him. Uh -huh. Isn't that all right? Yeah. And so everybody yeah. who was involved in this yeah. crucifixion had access to repentance. Yeah. Yeah. After he rose. And on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost fell, they had access to the Holy Ghost. We don't know how many folks who were there oh, saying crucify God. him received the Holy Ghost ultimately. We don't know. I believe that somebody did. Yeah. I just believe that. Look at God. Look at him. All they did against him 
So now that is the ultimate. He is the ultimate example of love. And, and, and so we're talking about love, the, the love of God. And so you must hate, and we, we've identified all of that. You've got to hate that stuff and to love. And so now, because I hate sin, I can love righteousness. And because I hate the devil, I can love Jesus. And, and you can't not hate the devil and love Jesus. It just ain't going to work out for you. So you've got to learn to hate what's wrong and fall in love with what is Right now, now understand you got to learn to hate before you learn to love because in you, in me, that is in our flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Behold, we were shaped in iniquity and a sin that our mothers conceive us. So we are, we are, we are first haters. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The sin abides on the inside, and so we got to take care of what's on the inside and hate that stuff that's in us. I was born jacked up, and I've got to hate being jacked up. I've got to hate being a liar. I've got to hate being a deceiver. I have to hate all sin in me in order for me now to experience the love of God. And I'm not talking about because he just, because he loved me. We can't stop there. But he loved me so much until he's willing to come and live in me, the Holy Ghost. And so when he abides in me, God is love. And the Holy Ghost is God abiding on the inside of me. And so so he is love, and now love lives on the inside of me, and that's why loving is not hard to do, because I have rejected all of the sin. I I hate sin. I hate hating. I hate everything that's not consistent with the righteousness of God, and so accepting holiness is not hard. It's natural now, spiritually so, because of the Holy Ghost, and so now I. I can walk in newness of life because I have learned how to love Jesus. He in turn has made his abode with me and now he abides on the inside and therefore love lives in me. Lord have mercy. Yeah. And I thank God for the love that lives on the inside. Yeah. It compels me now to pursue the righteousness of God. Yeah. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You can't criticize the fruit of the spirit. You may not like it, but you can't destroy it. And you can't criticize it. You can talk against it, but it carries no weight whatsoever because I've learned how to love. And when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost that God made available to each and every one of us on the day of Pentecost, and it could not happen until Jesus was crucified, until he rose from the grave on the third day, and until he ascended up to glory, he promised he would send a comforter who remind them of whatsoever he said to them. And so on the day of Pentecost, we gain access to Christ living on the inside. The Holy Ghost love on the inside. And now we walk in newness of life. And so we have mastered hate. I hate sin. I hate confusion. I hate hating. I hate every evil way. I hate everything that God does not approve of. And so we start perfecting love. And the reason I don't practice sin is because I hate it. Lord have mercy. I don't struggle with sin because I've learned to hate sin. And I, I, I walk in righteousness because I've fallen in love with Jesus and not just singing but in my living I fall in love Lord have mercy and it is relationship with Jesus that keeps us from being so frustrated from being, from being depressed from being confused because we've fallen in love with Jesus and now we walk in his agape love I'm not talking about arrows. I'm not even talking Philadelphia uh, philanthropy. I'm not talking Philadelphia love. I'm not talking, I'm not talking phileo. I'm talking about agape love. It is the love of God. It, it is a love that we just can't help. I 
can't help but love you in spite of you being mean to me. Now, I just had not a fool with you, but I, I can't help but not love you. I but love you anyway, you see? So because love is on the inside, and hate is not an option because the Holy Ghost abides on the inside. See, if it were just phileo love, then it would just be in my mind and, and, and my thoughts, and, and I would decide based on my feelings and my thoughts or uh, how who I should love. But when it arises to the level of agape love, then I know you talked about me like a dog, but I can't talk back like that. I know you mistreated me, but I cannot mistreat you. I know you you, you wounded me, but now you're hungry, and I've got to feed you. I know you scandalized my name, but you're naked, and I've got to clothe you. I'm talking about that love. The love that you just can't help because of the Holy Ghost. Lord have mercy. And we master the love of God. And we master hating sin. Then the world can see Christ in and through us. And now we are the example that he's calling for in these last and evil days. Listen, John writes in John 13 and 33, 34, 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another um, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you if you have loved one to another well well well, well look how they they, they they want to hang together all the time yeah it's a love yeah. my inheritance is amongst those that are sanctified yeah. and by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. They show love one another. Baby, you got that right. We love one another because we are compelled through the Holy Ghost, a body on the inside, to demonstrate love to one another. The Bible says do good to all men, but especially to those who are the household of faith, those who are of God. We are commanded to take care of the brethren love everybody but especially the people of God by this they're going to know that we are his disciples because we demonstrate love for one another and we cannot have anything in the way of love thou shalt have no other gods before God and God is love that means that you can't have anything before love hate cannot be present at all not even a little bit because a little leaven leaven the whole lump we've got to shed the ways of sin we've got to love God first you got to fall in love with righteousness your wife can't be in the way of you loving God your husband cannot interfere with your love for God your children cannot be an excuse your buddy, your friend, your cousin your grandmama, your big mama, your pop pop none of them can be an excuse We've got to learn to love God first and foremost and love everybody less than we love God. But sin, we can't love less. But sin, we have to outright detest. I hate sin. Everything about it. Lord have mercy. We gotta love people less than we love God. That's in the sense of, 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 of hating them. But when it comes to sin, we have to detest sin. We have to learn how to hate sin. And in our inability to love right hinders our ability to follow Christ. And so if we're going to be truly committed disciples of Christ and sell them a, a, a prop, a serve them properly, then we have to sell out. If you won't sell out, then you are not serving Christ. Listen to what Jesus says in, in Matthew 19 21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And of course, he found this a hard saying when he tells us to sell out, leave sin alone, leave the world alone, leave your mama alone, leave your daddy alone. Leave your children alone. Leave that job alone. Anything or anyone that gets in the way of your relationship with Christ, you've got to hate it, leave it alone. Oh, 
overnight us because we are in love with ourselves. We are in love with folks. But we're not in love with Jesus. Mm. And if you don't love him, then you hate him. Yes. You cannot be indifferent. To either you're going to love him or you're going to hate him. Either you're going to do what he says or you're not. If you do what he says, then you demonstrate that you love him. If you disobey him, you demonstrated that you hate him. And guess what? If you hate Jesus, then you are in love with sin. Mm. Because hate is of the devil. But when you hate the devil, then that's the proper order of things. You can't love Christ and love the devil. You can't love sin and love righteousness altogether. Now, if we learn to hate sin and love righteousness and we use Christ as our perfect example and we see that all that he endured in this world he came to die for people who have proven rebellious who have proven to be hard headed who rejected him who were just terrible people but he came for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But, the world through him might be but that the world through him might be, saved. might be saved. And so as we seek God and we, 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 we make our plea in, 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 the, in the words of Paul in Romans chapter 7 verse 24. O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Well, when we consider the written word of God, the deliverance that is found in the written word of God, God's word delivers us from ourselves. Romans 8.21, Paul writes, Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. And so we don't have to remain on the path of corruption and destruction. Uh -huh. Because Christ gave himself for our sins. That he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. In Galatians 1 and 4. And so we have no excuse whatsoever to not do what thus saith the Lord. Except we don't hate sin. And we don't love righteousness. So we allow ourselves to be deceived by the murderer. We know he's a murderer, and we still allow ourselves to be deceived by him. We are some kind of insane. You know he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And you still struggle pulling away from him? Something wrong with you. And you only wait till they get fire. So you're crazy and you're going to burn. That's awful. Isn't it great that we take advantage of the opportunity to repent of our sins? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't that great? Thank you, Lord. To know that we don't have to live lifestyles of sin no, anymore. No. Thank you, Lord. That God gave us a way out of sin through receiving the gift of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Why would any of us Thank you, Lord. choose to live in sin when Christ has already made us free? And if he's made us free, the song goes, why should I be bound? I have no reason to be bound. But if you don't hate sin, you're bound. You must hate to love. Come on, give God praise. Amen.